In this video, we're going to go over solutions to the functions exercise. I'll be writing these solutions in Sublime Text. Let's start with the difference function. All we need to do here is return the difference of two parameters. We also need to make sure that we are using the return keyword here so that we don't return undefined from the function. Now let's move on to the product function. I'm going to write a function called product, which takes in two parameters. Let's name these parameters a and b. Remember, the names of these parameters do not matter, but we should strive to call them something understandable. Now this function needs to return the product of the two parameters, so let's also make sure we use the return keyword so that our function returns a value that is not undefined. For the next function, we need to accept one parameter and print out the day of the week starting with Sunday as the value of one. Now you might be thinking, this is a great use case for a long if-else statement or maybe even a case switch statement. That would be a working solution, but what else can we use to look up a key and return a value? Let's make an object where each key will represent a day of the week. Here's what that might look like. Let's make the keys numbers and values as days of the week. Finally, let's just return the value in the object with whatever parameter was passed in. The best part about this is, if the key does not exist in the object, it will return undefined. Something to learn from this is that objects are very useful as lookup tables for values, and we can solve many of our problems without if statements. In the next function, last element, we need to return the last value in an array. What might be tricky here is that we don't always know how many elements will be in the array that we call last element on. Thankfully, we can use the length property to determine how many items are in the array, and since arrays are zero indexed, we need to subtract one from the length. So all we need to return from this function is whatever the value is at the length of the array minus one. If there is nothing there, the value returned will be undefined. For the next function number compare, we need to write a function that takes two parameters and compares the first and second. Conditional logic is exactly what we need for this function. So let's write an if statement that first checks to see if they are the same. I'll be using triple equals here so that we can compare type as well as value. If they are the same, let's return numbers are equal. Otherwise, let's see if A is greater than B. And if so, return the first is greater. Now, if the numbers are not the same and A is not greater than B, the only possible option left is that B is greater than A. So we could add an else statement or another else if statement, but a better refactor is to just return second is greater. This reduces the amount of code that we need to write and is a pattern that you should strive to write your code in. For the next function, single letter count, we need to count the number of times a letter appears in a sentence. So we want to go through each character of the string and see if it's the same as the letter that we're looking for. This function needs two parameters, the string we are searching through and the letter to find the count of. Just like we can use a loop to iterate through an array, we can use it to iterate through a string, since strings have a length property as well. Let's make a variable called final count, which will store the number of times the letter is found and since we haven't started counting, let's set this equal to zero. Now let's write a for loop to iterate through the string. Inside of the loop, we need to see if the character we are at in the string is the same as the letter we're looking for. But we also need to make sure we are ignoring upper and lowercase. So let's set both of these values to be lowercase using the to lowercase method. Now if these values are the same, let's increment the final count value by one. Finally, once we're done looping, Let's return the value of final count. That looks good. In the next video, we'll continue with the rest of the problems in this assignment. See you there.